providing we do that by providing um, advice and information. We can help with things such as benefits and form filling. So that might be like DLA forms, housing forms. We can help with grant applications. Um, we also put on events and workshops, coffee mornings, and also any kind of array of issues that families with disabled um, or children with health conditions that might need any kind of support with. Um, let me just a minute. Sorry, I didn't go to the beginning. So, we're a national organization. So, we have offices in um, England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. We also have a helpline. We provide advice and information. We provide publications. We have a fundraising department and a head office in central London. And, um, they also put on events and workshops for families as well. So the session should be around an hour. As I said, it's being recorded. Um, microphones are off. And at the end of the session, um, you'll have an opportunity for a quick Q&A session um, to ask me any questions. And hopefully I'll be able to provide you some kind of support or um, advice on that. So this webinar is aiming to answer the following questions. What are we aiming for with our children? When are they ready? How to start to build those toilet training skills? How to start and where to go to for support? So what are we aiming for? So children are able to control their bladder and bowels when they're physically ready and when they want to be dry and clean. Obviously, every child is different and unique and develops at their own um, pace. So around uh, about the age of one, most babies should have stopped doing poos at night. By age three, most children are dry most days with the odd accident, especially when distracted, excited, playing, or just absorbed in something else. By age four, most children are reliably dry during the day. And then by age three to five, children learn to stay dry throughout the night with the occasional bed wetting. So this is a bit of the science of the body. So this is inside the body. So the bladder fills with urine every two hours for a child. As the bladder fills, the brain receives the message that they're ready to go to the loo. The child recognises that sensation, holds muscles until they've reached the toilet, and then the bladder empties and then contracts, bladder refills, and the cycle is repeated all over again. With a stool matter, it makes its way through the colon, water is then removed. It then moves into the rectum as a firm, soft, sausage shape, causing the sensation that they want to go for a poo. The brain receives that message and it either evacuates the stool, obviously by going to the loo or it's delayed. If it is delayed, the stool moves back into the colon and the sensation stops. This is why most children can control their bowels before their bladder. And healthy bowels pass soft poo at least three times a week. Obviously there's variations of that. Toilet trained outside the body. So a child can independently recognize the sensation of needing a wee or a poo. They can control their muscles. So, you know, being able to go for a wee and um, do a poo. They can communicate that to you. That could be verbally, or it could be um, with hand movements, gestures, um, undress and redress. So take down their pants, pull down um, their knickers, um, and then obviously pull them back up. They should be able to reach and sit comfortably on the toilet and then be able to flush the toilet and wash, wash and dry their own hands. So when are they ready to be toilet trained? Signs that your child is ready. So they're aware when having a wee or a poo. They're either hiding or fidgeting, moving around. They might start to show discomfort when a nappy is wet or soiled by crying or just making you aware. 
waking from a nap or if a dry nappy and staying dry for at least two hours, showing an interest in the potty or toilet, intentionally communicating that they want to go to the toilet either um, by speaking, telling you um, gestures, they can sit still on the toilet and they can follow simple instructions such as wipe yourself, wash your hands um, and so forth. There's a couple of barriers um, to getting ready for toilet training, and that one could be limited diet or dehydration. So that could be poor fibre and water intake, which then leads to constipation. Constipation then obviously leads to pain, discomfort, and decreased bladder control. And then obviously because of that pain, they've got that fear and resistance and don't want to go to the toilet and will hold in their poo. We recommend that children aged two to five have one litre of water a day and 15 grams of fibre per day. Another barrier to getting ready might be unmet development needs. So it could be communication issues, um, physical or learning difficulties. So this is our little, are they ready checklist. So one, are they aware when having a wee or a poo? Do they show discomfort when they're wet and soiled? So if they're in a nappy, you know, and their nappy is wet and soiled, are they crying, um, making you aware that they're not happy? Are they staying dry for at least two hours so they can control that? Are they communicating to you? Are they talking to you about going to the loo? Are they um, making you aware that they're ready to go to the loo? And they, are they able to sit still for a few minutes on the toilet? And again, follow simple instructions such as, you know, wipe yourself, wash your hands, pull up your pants and so forth. But if they are not ready, that's still OK. We're just slowly building the skills for when they are ready. So how do you start to build those skills? So getting ready. So inner and outer body awareness, e.g. label sensations they are feeling. So if they feel that um, they need to go for a poo, you can label, do you need to push? Do you need to let it out? Um, help communicate activities they like and don't like. And also try pants under nappies to see if they can feel the sensation. So that's just kind of a starter point for you. The fine motor skills, so e.g. sensory play, threading and building blocks, these will help with toilet training and being able to wipe themselves, um, flush the toilet, all of those kind of um, things you need to be able to do to go to the toilet. Attention and listening skills, so um, being able to communicate their needs and you being able to listen and understand, so e.g. playing games, sharing toys, taking turns, singing action songs. So, you know, you can um, use play um, as a kind of building block to toilet in um, training. So how to start. So observe, prepare, show, do, and review. And we're just gonna go through each of these steps individually. So observe, observe your child's behaviour and habits. So when do they want to go to the toilet? Where are they when they um, that activity is about to occur? What is their poo or wee like? Um, how do they react before, during and after? So before um, they go to the toilet, are they anxious? Are they nervous? Are they willing to go? When they're actually on the toilet, is it an issue um, or... Is it something they're happy um, to do? And after, are they upset? Are they proud of themselves? Are they comfortable or avoidant of the bathroom? So when in the bathroom, are they okay in that environment? It can be quite a sterile environment. Um, it's cold, as in it, you know, it doesn't always look as visually pleasing as probably the other rooms because it's, um, as I said, quite a sterile environment. Um, so do they avoid that, that place? And then you can keep a record. There's um, different apps out there like P Perfect Potty and Potty Train. And I can send you um, some links to those apps. 
but start to prepare your plan. So if you need to make any changes to their diet, so again, that was about making sure they um, drink enough water and there's enough fiber in their diet. You could seek advice from other healthcare professionals, such as your GP, health visitors. Um, decide if you want to habit train. So habit train means um, you would have a set plan um, and go according to that, or use a natural rhythm, which is when they're ready to go to the toilet. So choose on keywords. Choose on keywords. So you could use visuals, as in um, um, visually visual cards that could show a toilet, it could show flush in the toilet, um, toilet paper. It could be a whole array of things linked to um, toilet training. You could use equipment such as steps, um, different toilet seats, and motivators that work best. So some kind of reward system might work well for your child. Find a good time to start for you and, and them, e.g. the summer holidays. This works well because you all are probably a bit more relaxed, um, you've got more time, there's not the school run. Um, it's just a bit of an easier, um, relaxing time. And then share your plan with everyone involved in your child's care. So that could be your family, grand, you know, grandparents, aunties, uncles, um, and even friends if they're involved in your child's care. And then obviously, you know, the nursery. This is just a few um, images of equipment and aids that you could um, use to aid your toileting journey. So there's light up toilet seats. Um, you might want to make the environment a bit more visually pleasing. You could use um, stickers or wallpaper of characters they like. Um, there's a step up here, a ladder, um, which makes it a bit easier for them to climb onto the toilet. Um, pull up pants, timers, um, as I said, the app, and maybe um, a reward chart as well. And then there's these obviously padded seats, which make it a little bit more comfortable for your child. And then you can um, show them what to do by, you know, going to the toilet with them. So take them with you to the toilet when you're ready to go. Um, and then reinforce these behaviours with books, apps, videos and toys. There's lots of stuff out there. Build association. So instead of changing the nappy in maybe, I don't know, the bedroom or the living room or wherever you change it, change it in the bathroom. So they know that, you know, changing the nappy or going to the loo is connected to the bathroom. And then put the poo from the nappy into the toilet so they know that's where that goes. You could introduce new equipment before you're ready to use it. So um, not while you're doing the toilet training, but beforehand, you could show them the new equipment that you're planning to, to use, whether that be, um, you know, the padded toilet seats or the timers, um, whatever that may be. Then practice sitting on the toilet or the potty without any pressure. So, um, you know, you could show them sitting on the toilet, obviously, or um, put them on the potty without any pressure of actually going to the toilet. And just try to create a comfortable, positive experience. So doing the actual toilet training. So we recommend focusing on the daytime first and leaving the nighttime toilet and training to a bit later on. Um, obviously, you've just got to go with your child's needs and then weigh that up as you go along. But yeah, focus on the daytime first because that's going to be the, um, the first step and the easiest step. Um, prepare that the child is wearing clothes which are easy to pull up and down. So ideally elasticated um, waist. Um, or if they're wearing dresses, obviously that's fine. Um, but yeah, something that's easy for them to pull up and down rather than you know buttons and zips and all of that stuff. Encouraging guys, so you might go with, oh, let's do it every two hours or in 20 to 30 minutes after food, or again, just follow their habit and when they want to go and be guided by them. Stay positive, because if you're distressed, um, you know, that could impact on them. Um, so take them away from the toilet and try again when calm. Um, yeah, it's not it's not a race. So just yeah, do it at your own pace. Don't um, get distressed about it, which I know is easier said than done. 
And then celebrate success. You know your child and how they thrive and um, what kind of reward system or praise work. Some children obviously might just, you know, like a, a verbal well done or, you know, some kind of reward might work, work with other children. Be consistent. So stick with what your plan is, whether that's visuals, um, motivators, rewards, the routine, um, keywords. Um, yeah, just stick whatever your um, routine is. Try to stick to that. Obviously, you know, later on down the line, you might need to change that. But, you know, initially just be consistent with the plan that you've um, devised. And keep calm. Accidents happen. Try not to show your frustration as, again, um, your child might pick up on your stress and then their stress. So, yeah, try to keep calm. And then just review your child progress. So decide, decide on the end date. So, um, you know, you've got your start date. Decide when you ideally would like them to be toilet trained and just kind of work towards that. And if it's not working, just stop and take a break. Um, sometimes you just need to kind of put it on hold and revisit it at a time when, um, yeah, it's, it's hopefully starts to work again. And then you can go back through the steps. So um, you might not start at the very beginning. You might think, well, they've got to this stage. Let's move on to um, this stage now because we don't need to go right back to the very beginning. And ch changes can be made or more time given. It's not, you know, it's not all set in stone. You've got to kind of review it as you go along. Because it, um, yeah, it's, it's basically something that you probably need to review on a, a weekly or monthly basis. So where can you go for some additional support? So you could speak to your GP if you feel um, your child may be constipated, they should be able to give you advice and help on that. Or if they don't have the expected bladder control that um, you're expecting. You can also speak to your health visitor if you feel your child is not in line with their expected milestones. And then there's also a couple of other websites here um, where you can get further information and advice. These are some of the typical questions and challenges that um, parents face when toilet training their child. So my child is scared of sitting on the toilet, which is quite a common one, actually. It's a new experience for them. Show them what is expected. Practice without pressure. Make the toilet seat comfortable. So there's those padded seats that I mentioned. Do something they enjoy on the toilet body. So you could, you could be playing games in the toilet, you could be doing a puzzle, something they enjoy. So it's not just an environment they think um, is cold and sterile. You give them time and calm and encouragement. Another one is they will only poo in the nappy or the bath. They may not be aware yet that, this, that it is happening and need more time. Um, yeah, so they might not even be aware that they've actually done the food um, in the bath. The bath helps relax muscles, helps them to relax when practicing on the potty. If they are hiding this, it shows that they are aware, but not, but not emotionally, but emotionally not ready yet. So help them to understand the next stage with toys, books, and create positive associations with the toilet. Guide them to the bathroom to poo in the nappy. You can sit on the toilet in nappy to poo, loosen and then remove the nappy. And then the last one is my child is not showing signs of being ready for potty training, but nursery says he can't start in nappy. What should I do? The parents have a duty of care to attempt to toilet train their children before obviously they start in kind of educational setting. Education, education settings have a statutory duty to support children with health conditions or development needs. They should work with you on the toilet training if there are ongoing needs. So if you're really struggling and you feel that there are ongoing needs, the nursery um, should be able to help you and support you with those needs going forward. So here are our top tips um, to success. So number one, check the are they ready checklist. If yes, then continue. If no, then no problem. So if they're not ready, um, you just need to really wait until they tick all those boxes first and then um, 
move forward with potty training. But in the meantime, just start to build on those skills, which would be, you know, communication, um, refined motor skills and so forth. Observe and record behaviours and toilet habits. So as you're going along and you're going through your toilet training journey, just observe and um, write down their behaviours, what's happening, um, if anything's changed, um, timings, all those kind of things, because then you can go back to it and review it based on what you've recorded. Seek advice if the child urinates, has bowel movements too much or not often. So as I said, if you're concerned um, with their um, bowel movements or the um, way they're urinating, then obviously contact your GP for further advice and information. Plan beforehand, so adapt the environment if you think that's necessary. You might be perfectly fine with what the environment looks like and they might be happy. Prepare any kind of equipment that you um, plan to use. You might not need any equipment. And then again, inform everyone involved, which will be family, friends, um, the education setting, um, anyone involved in your child's care. Show them for what is expected of them so they can model your behaviour. So, you know, show them about um, going to the loo, washing their hands, um, wiping themselves, um, all the things that you do so that. Um, they know this is the behaviour that um, you're expecting of them or would like them to do. Do pick a good window of opportunity. As I said, we um, recommend the summer holidays. You've got quite a long period of time. Um, you're more relaxed. Your child is more relaxed. Um, there's not the school run to contend with. And be consistent. So whatever your plan is, um, stick to that plan. Obviously, as I said, you can go back and review that later on, but you know, in the initial stages, just be consistent and just use what works for your child. Um, you know, I've listed quite a number of um, bits of advice, but you know your child. So there might be other additional things that you're doing that work for your child. It's, you know, there's not a right or wrong way. Um, and review it. If it's time to take a break, do that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no point um, pushing through when it's not working and you become frustrated and your child become um, frustrated so go back through the steps make changes where you think are necessary or maybe even have a break you know for a few weeks a few months um, and revisit it when um, it might be a better time for you and a better time for your child keep calm and be kind to yourself which is um, yeah not always easy but definitely needed um, yeah, yeah, you just want to be calm, relaxed, and um, not putting like added pressure on yourself. This process is different for each child, but with patient support and persistence, um, it can be achieved. And obviously, good luck with your toileting training and journey. Um, I'm here for questions and um, answers now but you can also email me afterwards if there's anything that we don't cover today. Um, and yeah, so if anyone's got anything they'd like to ask me, please go ahead and either you can, um, Hannah could either unmute you or you can put it in the chat, whatever works for you.